Hello, everyone. My name is Yu Hang Zhao. I'm from the University of Wisconsin Madison. So today I will talk about our research on understanding the experiences and challenges that people with visual impairments face when interacting with the emerging mobile service robots. And this work was conducted by my student Pragnia Bud and myself. So service robots refer to robots that perform useful tasks for humans, and they assist humans by automatically completing dirty, distant, dangerous, and repetitive tasks. And to perform these tasks, most service robots are mobile so that they can move around automatically uh, or by following other uh, users' control. And the market of service robots is growing rapidly with more and more robots being used in people's daily life. While the robots are presenting great potential, the, they can also pose all kinds of challenges, especially to people with visual impairments. For example, the current robot interface mostly focuses on uh, visual design, uh, providing only visual feedback so that it may not be accessible enough to people with visual impairments. And also, the moving robots can also become an obstacle that trip people, leading to some safety risks. So all of these potential issues can prevent uh, people with visual impairments from accepting, adopting, and protecting themselves from the emerging service robots. As such, our research uh, seeks to investigate uh, the experiences, challenges, and needs of people with visual impairments around different uh, types of mainstream uh, mobile service robots so that we can better understand the user's preference and needs and derive design guidelines uh, for the future robot technology to make them more uh, accessible, make sure that this emerging technology will not marginalize people with visual impairments in the future. To comprehensively understand visually impaired people's experiences, we consider their different roles around robots, including uh, both direct users who directly interact with the robots and the bystanders who do not have direct control over the robot but can be affected by them. For example, a blind pedestrian who encounters a delivery robot on the street. So we conducted an in-depth interview with 17 participants with visual impairments, and 13 of them are completely blind and four had low vision. Also, 13 participants, they uh, had experiences with more than one type of robots, but another four only have used uh, the vacuum robots before. So this study focused on three types of uh, mainstream robots, including the vacuum robots, deliver robots, and drones. And for each type of robots, we ask uh, our participants experiences and challenges from both the direct users and also the bystanders' perspectives. So from our study, we find that our visually impaired participant had actually relatively rich experience with different types of mobile service robots. And based on their experiences, we identified various challenges that visually impaired people face. And now I want to give some examples. So as direct users, we found that the key difficulty visually impaired people face is uh, to conduct the fine grade controlling of the robot's movements. So for example, the modern vacuum robots usually present a room mapping feature on the smartphone application, where the robot scans the room and generates a visual map, as you can see on the right, uh, so that the user can label different rooms on this map and assign specific rooms for the robot to clean. However, this feature is completely uh, vision dominant and inaccessible to people with visual impairments. And another example is when the user are using drones, it is very difficult to precisely control the movement of the drones because there is a lack of uh, real time and accurate feedback in terms of where the drone is, uh, how fast they are moving. And on the other hand, as bystanders, people with visual impairments have more safety concerns when encountering a robot that is beyond their control. So we find that the mobile service robots were a source of fear and anxiety for many visually impaired bystanders due to the lack of accessible feedback and the lack of standardized knowledge of the robots. So for example, when coming across a delivery robot on the street, participants perceived it as an unfamiliar moving obstacles. So as Kat said, 
I just know the delivery robots are some things that I shouldn't mess up around with because nobody is really there. I don't know if they'll stop or not. If I touch it by accident or something, I don't know if there is anybody watching them. And besides their own safety, some participants were also worried that the delivery robots may break their can, and some were concerned that they may confuse their guide dogs since the guide dogs were not trained to deal with these robots properly. So for example, Rose mentioned, I've heard stories about people who are blind and they have guide dogs, and the Amazon robots, uh, they don't know uh, to move over. So you kind of in the stillness since your guide dog wouldn't move over and the robot wouldn't move over. And lastly, I also want to talk a little bit more about the privacy concerns because um, many uh, current robots uh, incorporate different sensors and our participants were very concerned about the privacy violation caused by these robots, especially the drones. And some participants even highlighted the privacy inequity they faced as visually impaired bystanders because they cannot visually detect the drone and also determine whether they were captured by its camera. As John said, it's especially distressing if you're blind that somebody else is watching you when you cannot be watching them. And based on our findings, uh, I want to discuss some design implications that inspire more accessible and safe human robot interaction for people with visual impairments. First, our research uncovered that the current robot interfaces mainly rely on visual feedback to communicate information with the users, which poses accessibility barriers to people with visual impairments. So in the future, it is very important to consider the user's diverse abilities during the robot interface design and providing multi-module feedback, such as audio and haptic feedback, and also more visible visual feedback um, for people with low vision to make sure the robots are more accessible to people with visual impairment. So as the mobile service robots getting increasingly pervasive, humans will eventually share space with different types of robots. So it is very important for us to consider how to protect the user's safety uh, and the privacy, especially you know, considering there are more vulnerable uh, populations who experience disabilities. So one possible solution is to provide uh, accessible feedback to convey the robot's intents and behaviors uh, to people with visual impairments. For example, um, whether there are any nearby robots, uh, whether the robots are moving, uh, where the robots are moving to, and what sensors the robot have so that the user can receive sufficient information to protect their own safety and privacy. So to summarize, we contributed the first in-depth exploration on the experiences of people with visual impairments around different types of mainstream service robots. So with this research, we developed a comprehensive understanding of visually impaired people's challenges, coping strategies, and needs through both the lens of direct users and the bystanders. And our findings also provided rich data from the different perspectives, for example, accessibility, safety, security, and privacy, so that it can inspire more accessible and safe robot design for people with visual impairments. So if you're interested in more details and findings and design implications, please scan this QR code to access the full paper. Thank you so much.